The last big shortstop free agent is off the board as Trevor Story has signed with the Boston Red Sox. Six years, $140 million. This video, I'm going to talk about the Trevor Story signing, my reaction to it, what it means for the Boston Red Sox, and what it means for the rest of the American League East. Because as this offseason has gone on, this division is going to be really tight once again. If you like this video going over non-Mets moves, make sure to leave a like, comment down below. What are your thoughts on Trevor Story going to the Boston Red Sox? And the division in general, what order do you see these guys fishing in? That's a video that will be later on. During spring training, I'll do a predictions ranking of all the teams in every division and where I believe they will finish. And if you want to make my day, you can subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you're subscribed already, tell a friend, neighbor, stranger, dog, and everyone in between. And I know there's plenty of you that are watching not subscribed. So don't do that to me. That's not nice. So Trevor Story certainly had a bit of a down year this year. His last year with the Colorado Rockies as he batted 251. He had a 329 on base percentage at 801 OPS. And WRC Plus at exactly 100, so nothing too great there. He also hit 24 home runs, he drove in 75 runs, and he played... Oh, man, that doesn't matter. And then when you look at his babes... And then we looked at his baseball savant page. X Woba pretty good. XBA not that good for a guy getting $140 million. And other than that, nothing jumps off the page too crazy besides his speed being really good. However, his outs above average being really low. And that's a metric that is based off of range. So if you have good speed, you think you'd have good range. But it doesn't always necessarily translate that way. And then as expected, being at Coors Field with that elevation and your advantage, Trevor Story's numbers were not as good on the road. He batted 296 at home and 203 on the road. However, he did have more home runs on the road. So that's not a trade you normally see with hitters when it comes to Coors Field. But he's going to get to play at Fenway Park, which is a pretty hitter-friendly ballpark, particularly to right in the hitters. You can have the green monster there with his speed. Get a few nice little extra base hits here and there. And I think it's going to be a really nice move for the Boston Red Sox. It never hurts to add another pretty good bat in your lineup and like I said this was a down year for Trevor Story we know he's capable of being much better than this maybe being a contract year kind of weighed on him and he was not able to be the same player and because of signing I'm guessing Xander Bogarts is moving over possibly to second base if not maybe Trevor Story plays second base even though he hasn't played there at all in his major league career he's done it a little bit in the minors but it's just gonna be interesting to see who gets moved over because Trevor Story said he wants to play shortstop and I imagine Xander does too somebody's definitely gonna have to move over and this was a nice move by Boston because Xander Bogarts has an opt-out at the end of this year so let's say Bogarts opts I guess a crazy contract from some random team they at least still have a shortstop in Trevor Story this reminds me of what the Dodgers did at the deadline when they acquired Trey Turner knowing that at the end of the season Corey Seager's contract was expiring so since Corey Seager got a huge payday from Texas Los Angeles like all right well we still got Trey Turner that could be our shortstop so we're perfectly fine I feel like Boston is doing the same thing and if you can keep Xander Bogarts long term along with already having Trevor Story that's a plus now the most interesting thing about this Trevor Story contract is the whole opt-out where there's an opt-out after year four for and Boston can negate that opt-out by picking up his seventh year option. So that's an opt-out that is very odd. That's not the kind of opt-out you hear. It's usually just an opt-out. You know, there's a player one, there's a team one, things like that. But not where the team could negate your opt-out and keep you another year. Like, yes, that's good for Trevor Story if he got a seventh year. All right, I'm under contract longer. But when you look at this deal of six years, 140, it really is not amazing AAV. So it's not like it's one of those contracts where you, you'd be shocked if someone opt out of because they're making so much money that's not the case at all he's only making 23.3 million on an average annual value now we'll see if there's some signing bonuses and deferrals and things like that so average annual value is probably not going to be 23.3 exactly but if i'm trevor story and in the first three years i do perform really well i'd be trying to opt out of that deal so i could get better aav per year but if boston's going to negate that because like wait my trevor story is playing really good we want to keep him that seventh year then all of a sudden trevor story can't get out of that contract and even just the money in general you feel like trevor story could have got more with all the other deals that we saw these guys sign you know like marcus Semyon, like Corey seager i know those guys had good years but still i mean trevor story isn't that much worse than them like i said earlier the american league East just becomes really exciting and how about for the yankees aspect of this you need a shortstop everyone says you need a shortstop there's a bunch of really good ones available on the free agent market 
and you end up with Isaiah Connor Falefa. I don't really mean to knock Isaiah Connor Falefa. He's a really good glove. I have nothing against the guy, but let's be frank about it. Compared to these other shortstops that are out there, he's not on the same level as these guys, especially what they could do with the bat. Isaiah Connor Falefa cannot hit the way a Corey Seager hit, a Carlos Correa, a Trevor Story, a Marcus Simeon. And the fact that it was a team in the division and that the Red Sox didn't need a shortstop like the way the Yankees did, it is such a bad look for the Yankees. They really got to pull off this trade with Oakland, get a Sean Maniah, get a Frankie Montas, really help out your rotation because you are going to be facing some very tough lineups. Obviously, you got this Red Sox lineup, which is really hard to beat. The Blue Jays adding Matt Chapman. That lineup was already elite to begin with. Tip Bay always gives the Yankees a tough time. I thought Baltimore might get Carlos Correa trying to make their team a little competitive, but they're still working on rebuilding, getting more young pieces and going from there. And who knows, maybe these four teams could make it in expanded playoffs. That'd be pretty crazy to see all of the non-division winner playoff spots all go to the same division in the American League East. So it definitely going to make some from really compelling baseball throughout the course of the season. All these teams facing each other very frequently. I'm excited to see it. The other notable signing that happened last night was Jorge Soler signing with the Miami Marlins three years, 36 million dollars good deal for Miami with the DH being in National League now you need somebody that can hit and Jorge Soler can flat out hit he's a bit of an all or nothing power hitter he's gonna hit a ton of home runs he's gonna strike out a lot he's gonna whiff a lot he's gonna chase some pitch that you're like Soler what are you swinging at but when he hits a bomb you're like oh okay we're good and of course just another big bat for the Mets to face because why not it's not like we don't have to face enough tough bats as it is but again in fairness to the to Yankee fans or American League East fans both the National League East and American League East division races are going to be pretty crazy. There's going to be a lot of home runs hit, a lot of crazy things happening. So it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be a mix of emotions. It's going to be painful. It's going to be sad. So I'm going to rage, and you guys will see plenty of that when we do live streams and things like that. Speaking of live streams, probably doing one later today after the Mets' first spring training game that's actually televised. And the last thing about Trevor Story is that even though we talk about having the bad year, not a great WRC+, plus, not a great batting average, he still had a 4.2 war and you might not be into war but that it still shows that this guy does a lot of other things with the speed he has he also could steal bases so that's another nice element for the red sox to add to their lineup put some more pressure on the pitchers when they're facing other red sox hitters while you have trevor story on the bases you know he, he could have the pitcher second guess himself thinking he's gonna go thinking maybe he's gonna steal so that definitely is another nice bonus to have when you have story on your team so again let me know what you think about the trevor story signing anything else baseball or sports related and until the next one be safe be smart, be healthy, and let's go Mets. Nice job, Boston.